Hi, I'm Andy Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Scorpio for January 2018. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, check out my new blog series, Full Moon Reveal and Release Ceremonies. Plus, you can look for my Making Powerful New Moon Wishes for each new moon on that website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Also, go to my new website, CozyBySweetStarlight.com, for your new horoscopes. I am now writing succinct horoscopes. I'm not known for my succinctness, so if you'd like to have a little summary, um, a fun, light summary of some things to note for the month ahead, and also great reads for each sign for each month, then go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. So what's going on this month? We've got, woo, wow, we've got a big month. This January is the first January in a long time that this legitimately feels like a new year, a clean slate, an open time for pushing forward, for starting New Year's resolutions, for doing something different. This is a month that is not only my favorite month in the whole year for launching things and bringing them out, but also two full moons. They're both super moons. They're both the only super moons in the whole year. There's a blue moon, which is also one of the super moons, which is a total lunar eclipse. And then other things too besides being part of this open window that runs from now through March 9th, before this wall of retrogrades I've been talking about starts and the energy, the tides will roll in and back starting in March. And we'll have very few reprieves from this inward and backward movement. So you want to have things out and developing momentum before March, so that when the tides roll back, you're just reevaluating and readjusting and not trying to now plan your big launches. I've been preparing you for this time for a long time. We're going to go into crazy depth about the details of these general transits after I talk about the specific Scorpio report. I have the longest general transit report I think that I've ever done because there's so much to talk about. But first I want to talk about something specific to Scorpio. And these are going to focus around this lunar eclipse and where it is hitting in the chart for you. Next month, we'll talk about the solar eclipse because it happens on February 15th. So solar eclipse energies bring in new energies. Lunar eclipse energies end something, but at the same time as they're ending, a new beginning could be starting. So even with the endings, there's still new things happening. So for you early degree placements, and you can know if you're early because you're in like the first 10 days of the sign. Whenever the sun moves into your sign, whatever day that is, those first 10 days, those are our early degree people. If you're watching for your rising sign, it's around zero to nine degrees, okay? So y'all, and some of the middle degree placements, which are the next 10 degrees or, or 10 days of the sign, are going to have this eclipse happen in your 10th house. So I'm calling the theme for you, career spotlight. When we have an eclipse, especially a total, well, especially a lunar eclipse and a total lunar eclipse, this is a big event and it's a blue moon and it's a super moon. It's going to be very emotional. Okay. So there's going to be major endings. Sometimes the endings are good. Sometimes they're like a bittersweet ending. Like you've been busting your butt on something, working so hard and now it's done. And many of you are going to have that experience, that it's time to bring these creations out, or at least for your part of it to be finished and you're moving it along. So the career spotlight can come in many different ways. It could come in the completion and the fruition of something, something that you've been working on coming to fruition or going to the next level. It could also come in a dramatic and unexpected ending. You could lose your job. Many Scorpios are going to lose their job from this transit. Many Scorpios are going to voluntarily leave their job from this transit. Okay, so um, that could be how it manifests. If you don't lose your job, but you want to change jobs, you could get lines in about the new, you know, where you're going next. So something important, a career milestone or development is very likely. If you have been working hard, it's possible you could change jobs, like by getting promoted or, um, you know, just shifting to a different job. So there's just a lot of focus on your career. Because this is the house of fathers, this could also have something to do with your father. 
or a father figure, a stepfather or, or a boss or something. And there's endings involved here. So either you close a chapter with your dad, like maybe you move forward in a dispute or you move to a next level of your experience and the old chapter is done and you start a new chapter, that could happen. There are some times when something happens to dad, dad transitions out of your life, either through passing on or through, you know, an argument or leaving or something that they're doing or just, you know, the energy of something energy father leaving and the many different ways that that can look. This could also be an event like the full moon brings things to light. There could be something going on with your dad or your boss or a father figure that's been under the covers, you know, and now the full moon, the super moon, the blue moon brings it out into the open and you're aware of it. And it could be a health issue or it could be a financial issue or it could be something else, you know, but something involving that coming to light. So you might be holding space for dad at this time. Um, this could also have to do with, um, let's see, something with how you relate to your work. So if you're in a field and you're not interested in that field, you could come to a major decision like, wow, I have to get out. And the getting out might not occur now, but the decision to get out or the realization. Do remember about eclipses that they happen on one day, right? One, uh, one eclipse happens on one day. But the story of the eclipse is years. This eclipse cycle of Leo and Aquarius started at the beginning of 2017 and runs well into 2019. So here we are at 2018, we're midway through a story that is highlighting certain sectors of our lives. And we're mid-story. So even though there might be some final endings, there's, there's an ongoing story happening here. So a chapter is closing. Okay, um, so now for the rest of you, some, so the early and some middle will have that 10th. The rest of you have this in the ninth house. For you, I'm calling the theme a time to rise. And that's because the ninth house rules Sagittarius energy. Sagittarius energy is the big picture energy. It's very different than Scorpio. You know, Scorpio energy is the most minute, hyper-focused detail. And then the Sag is the most breadth, you know, so Scorpio would be the most depth and, and Sag would be the most um, breadth. So many of you, especially middle and late degree placements are going to have this dissolution of a perspective about something like a major change in how you see things. And this could come from standing above and looking down on the bigger picture I always like to use the example for illustrating this energy that if you were in a little village and your water source was cut off, then you would not understand why the water source was cut off because all you see is that the water source is not there anymore. But if you're on the mountain and you can see that three miles up beavers made a dam, which is why the water source is blocked, then you could break up the dam and get the water source back. So there's something about this that can be relevant because for many of you, because if you've been in your Scorpio hyperfocus, there could be something important that has to happen that has to do with looking at the bigger picture and kind of relaxing, relaxing that depth a bit. This could also mean an ending, closing, culmination, fulfillment, fruition in one of the following an educational um, project. So you've been learning something and now maybe you're ending that educational um, project. A teaching project. You could be teaching something and you could be closing that out. This could also have to do with a way of learning or a way of teaching. Something involving education, learning, teaching. There could be a publishing project that is ending. The ninth house relates to publishing. So you could be working on a book and be ready to bring it out into the world. And if so, this is perfect timing to do that. Um, there are lots of beautiful dates and I go into great detail about those dates and things that I like for making permanent decisions when we talk about the general transit soon. 
Um, this could also have to do with international business, closing out a way you do international business, closing out a business, you know, an international business account, different countries, different cultures, different languages are all here. So something about that could be closing or ending. We say closing or ending, but also remember with a full moon, something could reach a culmination. So full moons can actually bring opportunities too. So you could have an opportunity with teaching or with learning or with an international something that could come that you've been working on because it's a culmination, it's a fulfillment of something you've been doing. So that's a possibility as well. So these are the things that are most on my mind for Scorpio this month. And now I wanna go into crazy depth about why this month is so powerful. What are the pieces in it that make it so powerful? How you can use those pieces, how to frame this month in the scheme of the whole year and more. So we'll talk about that now. So the theme for the month of January for all signs is once in a blue moon. This is such a power packed month. It is so crazy. I hope that I can do it justice. There are so many things to talk about. Um, and one of those things is a blue moon, which also happens to be a super moon, which also happens to be a total lunar eclipse. So we'll get to that, but there's a lot of things, there are a lot of things about this month that are so important to know. The first piece of information is that this month will truly be like a clean slate and a, a launching pad as we think of a new year to be. Many Januaries in recent times, if you've been listening to my reports for years, you've heard me talking about this very often, many Januaries are covered in a Mercury or another personal planet retrograde. And so we start out this new year with everyone expecting there to be this burst of new energy. But when there's um, the shroud in retrograde, it doesn't work that way. So this year is actually energetically new and open. It is completely free and clear of personal planet retrogrades after January 12th. We are still in the shadow period from Mercury retrograde that happened in December. Um, but once we get up to January 12th, that shadow is completely past. And even in the days leading up to the 12th, um, there's still so much energy for moving forward. This period of time between January 12th and March 9th is very critical to understand in the scheme of the year. January is one of the three months, well, it's actually January, February, up through March 9th, where you don't have any personal planets retrograde. Personal planets are the ones closest to us. So the ones that go retrograde are Mercury, Venus, and Mars. When one of those planets are retrograde, we're in a phase of going backwards and inwards. Okay, so kind of the tide is coming in. Okay, the emotional tides are coming in, everything is going inward. We don't want to launch our boat off of an island when the tide is coming in. Okay, that's why I spend so much time helping you understand these energies. So between March and throughout the rest of the whole 2018, we have Mercury, Mars, um, then Mercury and Venus and Mercury three times um, being retrograde. So if you're planning on getting something out there, I'm gonna light a little fire under your butt or big fire under your butt. If you are intuitively drawn that now could be the time for you and that this is making sense with your being, it feels right, take advantage of this open launch pad between January, February and into March. So even though the shadow period doesn't end until January 12th, there are amazing dates within like from the 6th through the 9th especially, I'll go into more details about that, that if you're feeling really ready to start pushing some things out, then that would be great. Okay, so now we understand that January is my favorite month of the year for launching things, for pushing things out, for starting things, for making new decisions, for, you know, doing big things. It's also one of the only months in the year that the tides energetically are not coming in. Um, so that's the first thing to know. The second thing to know is that we have two full moons this month. This is going to be a very emotional month for better and worse. Sometimes emotions are high because something is awesome. Like this full moon that we start out with, um, we start the year out with January 1st or 2nd, depending on your time zone. We start out the year with a full moon in cancer. 
So that brings fullness, completion, fruition to everything with home, family, maternal energies, mothers, mothering, you know, houses, um, um, real estate, anything having to do with home and family and maternal energy. And for some people that could be this wonderful coming together of family, you know, wonderful family holiday time. It could be um, some culmination for some housing related thing. So it could be the emotional tides are running high in a positive way. It could also be some conflict or strife or drama or something coming to a head as it relates to one of those sectors. The second full moon is also, oh, by the way, that first full moon, the Cancer one, is the first super moon of the year. A super moon is when the moon is closer to the earth and it looks like it, it looks bigger in the sky. You know, sometimes you look out at the full moon and you're like, oh my gosh, why is it so big? It feels like we're, you know, on a different planet looking at a different moon. That is a super moon. So we've got only two super moons this year and both of them are in January. So if you understand that obviously the moon has gravitational effects on water, we're mostly water, the planet's mostly water, we feel those full moons. It's never questioned even by mainstream people that people are affected by the full moon, okay? It makes me bonkers to not see how people don't extra extrapolate out, like, okay, if we're affected by the moon that way, obviously we're just as affected by the rest of the planetary transit that way, whatever, but that's another topic. Um, but either way, this full moon is a super moon, so it's going to be more emotional, it's going to be more powerful. The second full moon of the month, which is called a blue moon, and it's also a super moon. So we have two super moons in the year. We have two super moons in January. We have two full moons in January, and they're both these crazy, powerful moons. And the second one on the 31st is this full moon in Leo, which is also a total lunar eclipse, which is visible throughout a lot of the world. Um, pretty much everyone in the United States will have some view of this. Lots of um, Northeast Europe, Asia, Australia, Russia. There are, are many places in the world that will actually see this total lunar eclipse. So a blue moon has different definitions depending on who you ask. But one of the definitions is that there's a second full moon in a calendar month. All right, so that's the definition we're using here. Also, sometimes when there's a second full moon in a sign, um, that would be a blue moon. But in this case, we've got the full moon in Cancer and the full moon in Leo, and the second one is the blue moon. So obviously we have the saying, once in a blue moon, these blue moons don't happen very often. It takes a couple of years for that difference between the lunar calendar, which is about 28 days, and or the lunar month, and the calendar months, there's about 11 days difference difference in you know the lunar calendar to the regular uh, calendar that we use. So when that lines up after a couple of years, a little over two years usually, um, that's when the blue moon happens. So this is a very special time. This is a very momentous time. This eclipse is going to remove things from our lives for better and worse. This is the end of an era for many, um, you know, um, many areas in life and we'll talk about well actually i did talk about that in the um where this might hit for your sign in the uh, sign report before this general transit report okay so some other input about the month of january is that we have dominating energies in capricorn so most of the uh, personal planet energy is you know um moving into this Capricorn energy, which is steadfast, ambitious, practical, efficient. Um, and it's interesting because Capricorn energies are very unemotional, right? But we've got these two full moons, these super moons, with all of this emotion. So there'll be a lot more emotion going on compared to the general energies of Capricorn. Also boosting the Capricorn quotient here is that Saturn has recently, as of the end of December, moved into the sign of Capricorn, which is its own sign. So we talked about that in the report last month for December. So if you haven't listened to my December report, I talk about how Saturn moving, changing signs um, will affect you. So Saturn moving into Capricorn is a whole new era of this, um, uh, of the story of uh, Saturn. 
So you can see this clean slate, this new start, this launching pad. And it's interesting because often eclipses will change trajectories. So although this is a really great open time for doing something, for acting on doing, doing something specific, launching something, the eclipses often change directions. So really tune into your intuition when, it, when you're feeling into what you're supposed to be bringing out and how many resources to put into bringing those things out. Um, and do just expect some wild universal trajectory changes. So maybe you buy a house this month and then all of a sudden in a couple of weeks from the eclipse, you get a job offer somewhere else and now you have this house that you just got. You know, you can see there's a lot of that kind of energy going on where you're moving forward doing something, but then the universe takes you whoop, over here. So, that's going to be a pretty wild time. So let's talk more about um, the breakdown of the month. And you can get a written version of some of the highlights that I'm about to discuss when you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my email newsletter. Or you could also go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. When you sign up for the newsletter at either of those places, it's the same newsletter. Cozy by sweetstarlight.com also gives you a written version of um, your uh, signs horoscope, usually focusing on something different than what I talk about in videos. So it's a nice supplement. Um, so when you go to one of those two websites, you can sign up for the free email newsletter. And a month before, just like I do these videos a month before, you'll get a written version of the dates to note, the energies that are happening on that day. Um, so if you like to have that for your organization, then definitely go there and do that. So we'll talk about some of the highlights. Okay, so we talked about the full moon starting at the beginning. Um, there's, on that same day, we have an amazing aspect with the sun in Capricorn making a nice aspect to Neptune. And this is a transit that heightens intuitive sensitivities. You know, it's um, dream time insights can be accentuated at this time. It's just a nice dreamy transit. So that's happening at the same time as this super moon, full moon, and cancer. The um, other aspect that's happening on January 2nd is Uranus is going direct. Whenever a planet goes direct, there's always, a, you know, there's awkwardness. It's like when you're going to make a U-turn, you have to slow down and you have to go going again and you have to get up to speed and it's just very awkward. But this sleeping giant Uranus, the bringer of change, which eclipses always remind me of the energy of Uranus because they bring things out of the blue and they just kind of have sudden sudden endings, sudden beginnings. And Uranus is very much like that. So now with Uranus awakening, there's this, um, it's the bringer of swift and radical change and it's sort of getting its footing again. So expect things that have been working in the backdrop to really start pushing forward with this energy. Then... Um, on January 3rd, there's a beautiful aspect with Venus and Capricorn and Neptune. And this is a sweet romantic um, aspect. You know, it's their idealism blends beautifully with practicalism. And it's just a nice um, blending of opposites in a harmonious way. On January 6th, we have Mercury making a beautiful aspect with Uranus and Aries. And this often brings exciting news or innovative ideas. This is going to be a month full of news. News is going to come in from all kinds of different transits for better and worse, you know, uh, lots of surprises. So when Mercury and Uranus combine, um, this is a really good time to do technology related things. We're still in the shadow of Mercury retrograde, the post shadow, like I said, you know, because at the end of December, it went to racked but until January 12th, we still have Mercury a little bit shaky. But starting around now, around the 6th, there's enough oomph forward that if you're feeling like it's time to get some stuff done, it's time to get a new phone, it's time to get a new car, it's time to launch your projects, you can start putting cogs in the wheel, moving things forward at this time. Also on January 6th, we have Mars and Scorpio conjunct Jupiter and Scorpio. Whenever we have a conjunction, there's a possibility for positive effects and there's a possibility for challenging effects. So, you know, Scorpio is this emotional, internal, um, deep um, energy. And so when you take actions now, because Mars rules action, 
it can go further because Jupiter is the great expander. It's kind of like taking your idea and then putting it on a, a rebounder and then bouncing it off even higher. That's, that's the energy that Mars combining with Jupiter reminds me of. So again, this is another reason why I like this time for moving forward, especially with collaborations or Scorpio related things. Also, very close by on January 8th, we have the Sun and Venus conjunct with each other in Capricorn, and they're both making a beautiful aspect to Jupiter and Scorpio. So here we have Mars make a, you know, make a, a notable aspect to Jupiter. Now we have the Sun and Venus. The Sun rules your vitality, your creativity, and Venus rules love, beauty, and money. So they're combined in practical Capricorn, okay, so that's amazing for business things. Then they're making a beautiful aspect to the expander of the of our world, Jupiter. Um, so there are lots of opportunities to shine creative brilliance and make money doing it, and there are probably some romantic potentials rolled into that mix. On that same day, we have Mars in Scorpio making a nice aspect to Pluto. So this transit can expand the powers of penetration and focus and productivity, you know, penetrating focus and productivity. So if you have to get stuff done, um, coming together to share or collaborate, it increases the potential. So you can see some similar energies coming together at this time. That's why I'm kind of giving a, 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 a green light based on concurrence with your intuition that if you wanna start moving forward now, even though we're not completely out of the shadow period, there's amazing opportunity to do that. Okay, so also this merging of Mars and Pluto with this nice aspect could come from joining or, or manifest in joining forces with either someone in a powerful position um, or powers of the unseen realm, so esoteric focus. On January 9th, we have the Sun in Capricorn conjunct Venus and Pluto and the Sun and Venus making a nice aspect to Mars and Scorpio. So we've got now a huge lineup, all of these things that we see kind of piling up on top of each other. There's more of that. So creativity and money and action are blending together beautifully at this time. Um, and we've got just, you know, female and male energies blending harmoniously. If there are any challenges that come up, the solutions will also be nearby. You know, this is a very intense time. Um, but it's also a very practical and grounded time because there's so much energy in Capricorn. It's like it wants um, practical solutions. It wants outcomes. It wants fruition of ambition. On between January 12th and 13th, we have Mercury and Capricorn, Mercury in Capricorn and Saturn conjunct. So whenever there's a conjunction, there's an amplification of both of the energies. And then you take into consideration the sign. So Mercury a lot of times represents news. Saturn a lot of times represents a buzzkill. <laughs> and so like some harsh reality could come in at this time. But alternatively, we can see this as a manifestation of affirming up, you know, like something made tangible, um, expression, Mercury expression made tangible, Saturn made permanent, something like that. So it could be a harsh or be a bummer, or it could just be a hard working energy that um, really solidifies some things for you. So again, I like all of this energy for establishing something important, making important decisions. So at the same time, Venus and Capricorn is squaring Uranus and Aries. So because of this, even though I like this time for moving forward, the way these kind of, you know, it's we live in a dual reality. So there's this great stuff and then there's this ah, more challenging stuff. It's going on at the same time. And you really have to feel for that sweet spot in between your in your personal flow, basically. So Venus and Uranus coming together usually brings jolts or surprises having to do with your self-esteem. Um, it could have to do with a love, a romantic relationship, a jolt or a surprise, a conflict within a romantic relationship. It could be a money jolt. You know, it's very common when Venus and Uranus get together in this configuration that all of a sudden you have to pay $600 for a new washing machine uh, or something like that, like an expense that comes out of the blue. And it's never a good time for that, right? So um, that's going on at the same time. So you just wanna feel in with all of these energies with launches. Don't push forward for the sake of itself. Just really dial in and make sure that you have a personal flow on that day that you're trying to do something so that you're not pushing against the tides. On the same day, Venus is also making a nice aspect to Chiron. So this blends intuition with the tangible reality. You know, So again, we're talking about this. If you can just really 
not let will be the only force at play here. This, this month is one that's really good for being active and using your will to do some important things. But we don't want to let that domination of the material will focus interfere with the intuitive um, part of things. Okay, so that's what this aspect is saying is saying that you can have you can do, you can move around the challenges if you're paying attention. All right. Also, you can look to see how softness or beauty can be added to the concrete reality. Um, this aspect can bring in that focus. On January 14th, we have the Sun in Capricorn squaring Uranus. So again, this jostling to creative flow or jostling to your sense of identity. Tests could also come to something important you're working on now. So maybe you're starting to push some things forward and you're getting some pushback. You know, and this aspect could represent that. The Sun in Capricorn is making a nice aspect to Chiron on the 15th. Okay, so we have um, lots of nice energy as far as being seen in a favorable light by someone and possibly someone who could be helpful to you. On January 15th, we also have this awesome aspect with Jupiter making a 60 degree angle to Pluto. 60 degree angles, we have a lot of those this month. They're the kind of angle that is harmonious, but it also wants you to do something with them. A trine, which is a 120 degree angle, is an aspect that you could do something with, but it usually just brings stuff to you. You know, this 60 degree angle wants you, it gives you something and then you, it's like, um, how I always describe this is that if you wanna make a pie and you have all the ingredients for the pie on the counter, the pie doesn't make itself. And these 60 degree angles bring all the ingredients for something, but then you have to go ahead and use them to make something. So Jupiter, the great expander in Scorpio, making a nice aspect to Pluto in practical Capricorn, gives the, the chance for success as a natural byproduct of hard work and self-development. So the more you look within, the more, and that's the Scorpio energy, the more your Capricorn energy, which is your place in the world, your material efforts and accomplishments, that can naturally just come into fruition. So any work that you put towards making positive life changes, even up until this point, will help to make this aspect go further. But you might have to take some action on it. Okay, on January 16th, we have a new moon at almost 27 degrees of Capricorn. So this is a powerhouse of a new moon. It is conjunct, which is right next to Pluto. Okay, so um, it's also right next to Venus. So that brings powerful transformation potentials, especially as it relates to self-esteem or money um, or uh, romance. There's also um, a 60 degree angle to Jupiter, which expands the awesome potentials much further. But again, there might be an action required. Then there's a nice aspect, a 60 degree angle to Mars, which brings power into action. And then there's a nice aspect to Chiron, which brings great potentials to be, again, seen in a positive light by people who could be assistive to you or people whose opinions matter to you and possibly could promote your work or your what you're trying to do. So there's all these really good aspects with the new moon. And then, of course, there's that one little wild card, which is Uranus. And so the new moon is also squaring Uranus. Um, which brings this uncomfortable wild card into this otherwise perfect mix. So just look out for that little dinger. On January 18th, we have a beautiful aspect with Mars and Chiron, and this can bring major power to look for meaning and solutions and the chance for powerful and permanent healing um, of a fractured reality. Okay, so Chiron represents this fractured reality, this woundedness, this issue that is a plague for us. And when Mars comes together, again, you know, Mars rules action. When Mars comes into the mix in this nice aspect trine, it gives this chance for the powerful and permanent healing. On the 24th, we have Mercury and Pluto conjunct. Again, we talked about this before when Mercury was conjunct with Saturn. A conjunction amplifies the energies of both parties, you know, both signs, or both, um, well, all of it, basically. In this case, um, it would be the same sign because it's a conjunction, but the, same, the, the planets. So Mercury rules communication, information, creative expression. 
Pluto rules transformation, so powerful news and powerful expression is more likely at this time. And it's not particularly emotional because it's in Capricorn. Um, so it could be just a very strong expression that's run into something permanent, pushing on into something permanent. You see me using the word permanent a lot this month. That's because the energy of Capricorn is one of permanence. It's something that you're building, it's something that you're growing, it's something that is material. And there's just so much energy of the immaterial blending with the material. So that's why you keep hearing me use that word this month. So this is an amazing energy for important business and other moves, and it's really supportive of rightly placed ambition. Okay, the reason why we say rightly placed is because with Pluto, Pluto rules power. And not everybody, or not, I mean, really all humans sometimes don't use their power in the right way, right? This is a human issue that we're working on. So the more you can use your power in the right way, when you have aspects like this, the more it's supported for positive outcomes that are free from negative karma. On the 25th, we have Mercury and Capricorn making a beautiful aspect, again, a 60 degree angle that requires some action to Jupiter and Scorpio. So this combination can bring a greatly expanded reverberation of your voice. So whether it's written or spoken or whatever your medium is, um, Mercury ruling your expression and Jupiter ruling this expansion, you know, you have this resounding effect. So it's magical uh, for really being heard, especially by someone in a position to assist or collaborate. And you'll hear this theme again and again this month too. All of this energy in Scorpio, Jupiter making Jupiter and Scorpio making aspects um, with all of these planets, that's the energy of someone assisting you, someone being in the perfect place to assist you or you being in the perfect place to assist someone else. It favors collaboration. Between the 27th and the 28th, Mercury and Capricorn is making a square to Uranus. So this transit can increase the likelihood for surprising and stressful news um, but some softness or ultimate healing outcomes are also increased because Mercury is also making a nice aspect to Chiron at the same time. So this sweet aspect to Chiron can soften this a little bit, but we have quite a few jolts this month with Uranus where it's like, up, oh, surprise news, up, oh, surprise things going on with money, up, oh, surprise, and then we have the eclipses, which often bring the big surprises. So speaking of the, the devil or the angel, however you want to look at this, the full moon, the super moon in Leo at 11 degrees of Leo, um, also a lunar eclipse, total lunar eclipse, can bring notable completion, culmination, fruition, or drama in the houses that it occurs in for you, which we talked about in the individual sign report. But the general um, closure, drama, culmination, fruition, completion, for everyone is occurring in the energy of Leo. And Leo has to do with children, it has to do with creative projects, it has to do with romance, romantic partners. Um, more, you know, uh, it, could, it could be a permanent partner, but sometimes it could be just someone more casually, um, romantically, that you're together with. This also is any creative project and it also can rule addictions. So something is coming to a close. So this is an amazing time to kick a bad habit. This is an amazing time to end a project. And you see how nicely this full moon goes with this theme of getting your things out into the world. We're in this open window to push things out. And here this eclipse is coming, bringing an end to something. So many people are going to have a creative project come to a close and be birthed. And then they're on to the next thing or the next level of that thing. So these are the things that are most on my mind for the general transits. Wow, what a month. Um, so happy new year. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and check out my new full moon reveal and release ceremony blog series. Um, I'll have that for all the new or all the full moons now. You can also check out my Making Powerful Wishes in Each New Moon series, which is on AnnieHelpsYou.com. If you go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com, you can see written horoscopes that are very succinct. I am not known for my succinctness because I'm a teacher of astrology and I love to teach and so my videos are long. But on CozyBySweetStarlight.com, the reports there are very short, very succinct, very well organized, very easy to take in, and they also include great reads for each month for each sign. Um, and they often talk about 
something different in the chart than I'm talking about in the videos. So you get a more well-rounded picture of what your astrological um, you know, uh, experiences may be. Also check out my husband, Bjorn Newman's um, tarot scopes. So you can go to IamHelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com to see what other additional information he might have for you with his tarot. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month.